In this lesson, you're going to get started in Modern Geometry 1. And I'd like to help you with a few introductory notes that will make it easier for you to get started and motivate you a little bit by helping you to understand the purpose of this study and how you're going to use it in the future. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Modern Geometry 1. Obviously, in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, modern geometry is not going to get a lot of attention, okay? We already teach classical geometry, and that's a major study in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, but we still offer classes in modern geometry, and there's a reason for that. Why study modern geometry? The main reason is that um, as time went on, uh, mathematicians and philosophers began to face new challenges and had some new theories about the natural world and things like that. And mathematics was focused on as the key for understanding the natural world, especially uh, after the 15 and 1600s when uh, men like Sir Isaac Newton and Rene Descartes, other philosophers, began teaching a mathematics-based natural philosophy. Now, I don't I don't necessarily expect you to understand what that means, but what's important is that there was a way that men thought before the 1500s about the natural world, and a way that men began to think about the natural world after that time in the 15 and 1600s, and that change in thinking led to a different use of mathematics, where mathematics became the focus of natural sciences rather than reasoning and traditional philosophy. So in modern schools, which are focused on science and mathematics, we have courses like modern geometry, which are different from classical geometry, and yet they use the same name, which creates some confusion. All right. Um, you may look around and see students that you know who are in modern schools or in other schools that claim to be classical, and they may be studying geometry, and it sounds good, but it's actually a different study. Um, it just has different goals. It, it, the content of the study is different. Um, and as a student in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, when you study geometry, when you study Euclid's geometry, you're going to be studying something that's different from the geometry that's being studied in modern schools. Now, the reason why it's important for you as a student enjoying a classical Catholic education to take time to work through modern geometry is because if you're planning to go to college um, and you're going to need to take the SAT, the standardized test that's used for college admission. The SAT tests knowledge of algebra and geometry that's assumed to be learned in modern schools. So modern algebra and geometry are important for you to study if you're planning to take the SAT test, which most students who want to go to college will need to do. So we're going to study modern geometry so that students in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy aren't at a disadvantage when the time comes to take the SAT. All right? So that's the main reason why uh, you should study modern geometry. You shouldn't allow it to become a focus of your studies because it's not that important, uh, but you should work through a course or a textbook in modern geometry so that you cover all of the information that you might run into on the SAT. Okay, so that's why it's good for us to study modern geometry in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. But what's funny about the study of modern geometry is that in modern schools, the students don't learn the arts of grammar or reasoning or rhetoric. And when you come to geometry, all of a sudden, students need to know basic ideas that are learned in those courses. But in modern schools, students don't learn them. So in this first lesson in modern geometry, the first paragraph says this, 
before the student, the modern school student, before the student begins the study of geometry, he should know certain principles and definitions which are of frequent use, though they are not peculiar to this science. They are very briefly presented in this chapter. And then if we look and see what are these what are these principles and definitions that are of frequent use that the modern school student won't know when he attempts to study geometry, we find that it's a list of logical terms, terms used in reasoning. So even in a modern school, even in a class teaching modern geometry, the teachers in the textbooks admit that students need to know reasoning and arts that are not taught in the modern schools. And in order to make up for the problems that are created by the modern curriculum, they have to stick chapters onto the front of these books in order to give what they say very brief presentations of terms, principles, and definitions that are necessary for these studies because the students don't learn these things in the modern curriculum. So this geometry book of ours, this modern geometry book, has to devote the first chapter just to explain to kids in modern schools what basic logical terms are because they don't study them, okay? Um, now, if you're studying classical reasoning and working through that program in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, these things are easy. If you study classical geometry in the classical, we study all of these things in detail. But in a modern school, they would need to stick an explanation on to the first part of the book that gives a very brief and really oversimplified explanation of these ideas, which hopefully, for classical Catholic students, you'll be able to understand much better than kids can in modern schools because they're simply not taught these important things. So in lesson one, you need to learn uh, quite a lengthy list of logical terms. And what I recommend, as always, is that you memorize these definitions. Okay, Memorization, when you get your mind in shape, memorization is the fastest and best way to learn things. Okay, You can complain that memorization is difficult or it takes a lot of time. But that's because you're not comparing it to the alternative. How are you going to learn things if you don't memorize them? So yes, memorization is slow and difficult, especially when your mind is not in good shape. But the alternative to learn without memorization is much more difficult. And really, we don't even know if it ever happens, because at least when you memorize, we can test and see that you've actually learned things. But if you don't memorize, how can we even test? And that's the reason why people actually like complaining about memorization, because they don't want to be tested or measured in their actual learning. Okay? If you're concerned with mastering a subject, you should want memorization because it's the easiest and fastest and best way to learn, and you can measure your learning by testing your memory work. Okay, so I always recommend memorization. So I would start with this section on logical terms, and I would just work through and memorize each definition. That's the best way to learn it. If we look at these terms, for example, we start out in rule two, and we learn that every statement of a principle is called a proposition. That's simple enough. Uh, we learn that in grammar and in reasoning and in classical geometry. And then we go through different terms. We learn about uh, the conclusion of a proposition. We learn what converse propositions are, uh, what the hypothesis of a proposition is, what theoretical propositions are, what demonstrable propositions are, and these are simply definitions to be memorized as you work through this chapter. We learn what a theorem and a problem is, what an axiom and a postulate are. Those are very important terms, and the definitions here are pretty good and helpful. 
So you know, that's good to memorize. Then we get into what a demonstration is, what indirect demonstration is. There's a Latin phrase uh, in your definitions that you should know how to pronounce. It's reductio ad absurdum. Um, that's uh, under that indirect demonstration definition. And then it goes on to talk about axioms and you learn, uh, I think there's five or six general axioms. Axioms are self-evident truths that don't need to be proven because they're, the truth of them is so clear. So you'll learn some general axioms and then you're into some exercises and some propositions. Um, and really there's nothing complicated or difficult about this lesson. You just need to go through it and do the work of a student to learn and master the content of this lesson. Um, again, memorization is the best way to do it. Go through, study as best you can, and use the lesson assessment as a guide to test whether or not you've done a good job learning that material. I'm going to cut off here with a relatively short video because I want you to go ahead and get to work on this first lesson. There's there's no other way around it but to get through it. And like I said, let the lesson assessment be the test of whether or not you've completed the objectives in this lesson. But uh, do that work. Memorize as much as you can. Get that assessment turned in as soon as you're ready uh, so we can keep moving through this modern geometry course. Remember, classical geometry is a philosophical study that's pursued for the sake of wisdom, for the good of our souls. Modern geometry is not the same kind of a study. Modern geometry is a practical study. The use of it is limited. Uh, we're concerned about learning these lessons because we have things to do in our ordinary life, like take the SAT test. Um, so we don't want to get bogged down in a course like modern geometry. We want to get through it as efficiently as possible. So if you run into a roadblock or are having a difficult time, don't allow yourself to get bogged down. Um, get in touch with me. Tell me what you're struggling with, and I can help you through it. Okay, so go ahead and get to work on lesson one. Uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing your assessment come in, and I'll get it graded and back to you. Um, so long as you have a, a pretty good handle of the material, I'll give you a two, and that means you can move on to the next lesson. If I see any problems that I can help with when you submit that assessment, I'll respond with some comments. But if you run into trouble, it's your responsibility as the student not to make excuses, not to complain, not to waste time, but to reach out, tell me what the problem is, tell me what you're struggling with, and let me help you so you can move, because we have to get through this course in Modern Geometry 1. I hope that first lesson is helpful to get you started. God bless your studies. Get to work.